Good morning. How's everybody doing? It, great. Uh, it is an absolute honor and a pleasure to be with you here today. Uh, growing up, my parents would bring me to the market with them in the early morning. And when we got back to the restaurant, my dad would clip me to a butcher block table in the kitchen and listen to loud rock music as he went about his morning prep. See, my parents met in culinary school, and when they went on to open their first restaurant, my dad ran the back of house, my mom ran the front of house and designed the restaurants, and so I literally grew up in the kitchen on the banquettes and have been immersed in the world of food ever since. Throughout the years, I went on to work nearly every job in the restaurant business, eventually growing into a role designing, developing, and opening restaurants throughout the world. And about two years ago, I was living and working in Abu Dhabi to open a new restaurant. And a week before we were set to open, I was sitting at the bar. I had sent the staff home after we had finished training for that evening. And I ordered a steak and potatoes kind of dish, a salad and a couple sides. And about halfway through my meal, I looked down and I cut into my steak and asked myself what, looking back, is kind of a silly and obvious question. And that is, where did all of this food come from? I'd been in the desert for nearly three months, hadn't seen a farm, hadn't seen a fresh body of water. And so I invited our chef to come out and we proceeded to have a three hour conversation about where each one of the ingredients came from. Ended up being around 12 ingredients from seven different countries in the United States, in Europe, in Central America, and even one from Australia. I thought this is kind of crazy. And we proceeded to have a further conversation about what we thought the environmental and health implications of getting all this food from A to Z were. And this moment, this moment of kind of contrast, illustrated to me the great power and fragility that exists in our global food system. It also confirmed for me, in a, in a rather dramatic fashion, what I'd begun to see all around the world in my work, and that is how deeply interconnected our food system is with our health, our environment, our economy, to issues of national security and migration. And I thought, as someone who grew up in this business, and to this point, I thought I knew a thing or two about it, had it taken me this long, this extreme of an example, to begin to comprehend the implications of our consumption? Perhaps there were others in my generation and beyond who hadn't either. As soon as I got back to New York, I started talking with my brother, Simon, who's a very talented filmmaker and environmentalist and here with us today, about what could be done. He's a, he's a, we spoke about the power of film. And over the years, I had studied his work and he had impressed upon me the great power of film. The power of film to educate and inspire to make sense of complex problems, and ultimately to allow people to see the world and each other in a new light. We spoke about the importance of connecting with our millennial generation, tech-savvy, civic-oriented, global citizens who already have north of $3 trillion in global spending power. Around this time in our country, it became clear that no meaningful change was gonna happen from the top related to our climate or our food system. And we recognized that a new story needed to be told about our food system, a holistic story. One that would build upon the years and contributions of those who have come before us in this movement. One that would resonate with our generation. And ultimately one that wouldn't point fingers at existing behavior, but would empower and inspire. So 18 months ago, my brother and I started to build a team of talented filmmakers and environmentalists and we set out to explore and document the interconnected challenges facing our food system. Above all, and most importantly, we set out to find and showcase solutions, to tell the stories of innovators, like so many of you here with us today, in healthcare, in education, in business, in policy, in the nonprofit sector. Innovators in the front lines of creating positive change in our food system. Innovators in the front lines of feeding tomorrow. Feeding Tomorrow, which became the name of our, of our documentary, and, I'll, and we've got a short clip for you in just a moment. And although we are in the final stages of production, and in fact just came off of three weeks of filming, I can tell you that our journey has been encouraging and inspiring. And despite the mounting challenges we face, which I know you are all far too familiar with, despite these challenges, I have a tremendous hope for our future, and believe more than ever in the power of film and in the power of food. I believe that beautiful, powerful, and dynamic storytelling, whether we're talking about 30 seconds, one, or two, or three minutes, this powerful visual medium will play a critical role 
in elevating our collective cause, in meeting people where they are at in their knowledge of these issues, and inspiring them to recognize and apply their own agency. And in doing so, we will awaken mass support in, in buying power and in votes for the work that so many of you are engaged in across sectors and across state lines. And I believe that at a time in human history when many countries around the world, including my own, are increasingly narrow-minded and turning inward, that food can and will be our common cause. The lens through which we champion international cooperation, marry ancient wisdom with modern technology, and together, together build a food system that is just, regenerative, and resilient. So once again, my friends, colleagues, thank you all for your contributions to this movement. The world needs you. And as you continue to innovate in your respective fields, please consider the powerful, the pivotal role that storytelling will play in connecting with millennials and audiences around the world who share our desire and our passion for a better tomorrow for our children. And above all, above all have hope because as we have seen and as we now know, the solutions are not just on the horizon, but within us and among us. Thank you. Now we have a short, uh, a short clip for you guys. There's so much beauty in this world. There's so much to be seen. We need to understand the whole system that we live in. Music, they say, is the universal language. I think food is. Food is the one global unifier. Everybody can sit down around a table and enjoy good food. I'm most fearful that our children won't have the opportunity to experience that. As a species, what are we doing with our time? How are we consuming this planet? Our current food system emits 30% of greenhouse gas emission. But without addressing the food system, you will not be able to achieve any climate change goals. You could walk into a grocery store any day and find any number of products without any clue as to how it was produced. To scale our current consumption to 10 billion people is simply manifestly impossible. We have just in the mission of making money and selling more products, we have created an almost irreversible epidemic of disease. What greater issue can there be if we have nothing to eat? There are no more issues to be debated. We are depending on this planet, but we're not acting as if we are. And it's time that we do, that we start planning for generations to come. Our current food system must be reshaped to achieve several objectives. So the food system must produce healthy, nutritious food for everybody. The food system must be sustainable. Water, land, energy must be reduced. In the food movement, the critical thing is connecting the dots between all of these different issues. Health, food access, the environment, food security, the economy overall, coming together with a common agenda and shared values about what we care for. What a beautiful thing to tap back into. You want to teach your kids something? Get them out to a farm and have them talk to a farmer. Expose that kid to the mindset of a farmer who can take this nearly invisible seed and expect to get this huge bounty of food out of it that would feed families. What is that kid going to take away? In this great circle of life, Everything is interconnected. The idea of being a farmer and understanding that farmers are the people that give life to the world. <laughs> if I could grow stuff and feed people good quality food, they may change the way they look at food and then in turn change the way they look at life. My personal philosophy on farming is to work with Mother Nature as much as possible. She could be your greatest lover or she could be your worst enemy. One of my favorite beliefs about our school is that we are intent on this idea of a holistic education. 
a transformative holistic education. Brooklyn Grange's mission is to farm rooftops, build green spaces in cities, and create space for positive conversations about food, farming, and ecology. We know that in a world where we waste three times more food than there are mouths to feed, hunger is not a scarcity problem, it's a logistics problem. And so copious technology is built to solve that logistics problem at scale. One of the most powerful things individuals can do is use their food choices as a way of changing the world. On the one hand, there are people in the world, they don't really matter. On the other hand, for some things you want to say no, they're an agent. What does it take to help young people transform into citizens who will speak truth to power, who will dismantle the status quo and rebuild the world in an image that is far more just than the one that we currently live?